Welcome to this Ready to Craft. In this video, I'm showing you how to create a snake that's stylish and not scary using ReadyBoard. To begin, I've already attached two pieces of ReadyBoard together. I use spray adhesive for this, but you can use whatever method you prefer. Next, I'm going to assemble my template. I like to trim away the white edges left by my printer, but this isn't necessary. To make my template a little stronger, I am also going to tape some sections on the back. Trim away the bulk of the background. I find this just makes the template easier to handle. I've got my board set up and ready, and I have applied repositionable spray adhesive to the back of my template. I'll cut away this blank space and set it aside for future projects. Then switching to my hobby knife with a new blade, I'll begin cutting out my snake. Notice how I extend my cuts and remove pieces of the background. If you are having trouble removing a piece, check from the back to make sure that your cut went all the way through. Once my snake is cut out, I will peel away my template. Some of my cuts didn't come out exactly perfect, so I'm going to use a little bit of sandpaper to smooth those edges. Whenever you are sanding foam board, make sure to wear a mask. Because the sequence fabric that I plan on using is dark, I'm going to paint my edges black. I'm just using acrylic paint for this. Now that my black is dry, I'm going to add a little bit more sparkle. I'm using this pearl acrylic set made by Amsterdam. I'm going to alternate between green and blue to match my sequence fabric. Now that my edges have dried again, I can begin laying out my fabric. I'm cutting out a piece that is large enough to give me a little bit of wiggle room without wasting a ton of material. I will fold up the extra and put it away for more projects later.
I'm placing my ruler on the top here to help hold the fabric in place. I still have to be careful because the fabric can technically slip from underneath it still, but it gives me a good starting point. I'm marking which side I want to apply the sequins to. I have applied a generous amount of spray adhesive. I have my can ready too. I'm also going to use an extra piece of foam board to control any overspray. If you're using spray adhesive inside, make sure that you are working in a well-ventilated area. I'm double checking to make sure my fabric is lined up properly, which is a good thing because it slipped a little. I'm trying to only apply spray adhesive to the parts of the fabric that are going to attach the snake. I'll just keep rolling my fabric down, working in sections. This seems like it might take a while, but honestly it only took about five minutes. Press the fabric down and allow it to sit for a little. I'm going to flip my project over and peel it away from the piece of foam board that I had put down to protect my work area. Using my scissors, I'll cut away any excess fabric that didn't get spray adhesive on it. I am all about conserving materials for more projects. Once that is finished, I'll move back to my hobby knife. I'm going to cut a little bit away from the edge of my foam board. I'm just concerned with cutting the fabric backing of the sequins. I'm not actually trying to cut through the plastic sequins themselves. I'm leaving a little bit of the extra fabric because it's easier to take more off than it is to add more back on. If you do cut a little too close to the edge, there's an easy fix. You can see here I got a little too close and my fabric is peeling up. Instead of trying to use the spray adhesive here, I'm just going to use some white glue. I'll spread it in an even layer and then just use some straight pins to hold that in place while it dries. Once that dries, you can remove the pins and your sparkling serpent is ready to hang. If you try this craft out, we'd love to see it. Our social media links can be found in the description. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If there's a foam board craft that you would like to see a ready to craft of, let us know in the comments.